financial leave should simply not be approached at this time, given the fragility of the world economy. Question number three, Dr. Russell Norman. Order, I've called Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Climate Change Issues and asks, how does New Zealand rank internationally in terms of net emissions in the latest United Nations National Greenhouse Gas Inventory data for the period 1990 to 2010? Mr. The Honourable Tim Grosser. Uh, the latest UN report on inventory data for this period shows that New Zealand's net emissions in 2010 are ranked 29th out of the 42 Annex I countries, roughly developed countries, in a recent summary by the UNFCCC. Supplementary. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is the report accurate then when it showed New Zealand had the second largest increase in net emissions of the 41 Annex I countries in the report? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, as a different issue about the rate of change going back over 20 years in six parliaments or seven parliaments, all I can say, Mr Speaker, is that uh, in the course of the life of this government, net emissions have decreased. Well, point of order, Mr point Speaker. Point of order, Dr Russell Norman. It was a very straight question. I asked, was the report accurate when it said we had the second largest increase in net emissions? The, member, the member's point is correct that it was a very, very uh, simple question. And uh, if the Minister doesn't have that information, then that's one thing, but I think he should attempt to answer the question. The Honourable Tim Grosser. No, the answer is straightforward. As far as I understand, the answer is yes over a 20-year period. The point I'm making is that the period for which this government's had responsibility, New Zealand's emissions in net terms have decreased. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Aren't New Zealand's net emissions going to increase even further because his government gutted the emissions trading scheme? And is he aiming to become the country with the biggest increase in emissions, a race this government seems determined to win? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm confident that the one commitment that we have taken, which is to reduce our emissions according to our original Kyoto Protocol commitment, will be fully met. Dr Russell Thank Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister think that Kiwis will be loving it, in the words of the Prime Minister, that New Zealand's net emissions, which increased by 60% in this report, are now going to go through the ceiling because the bottom has fallen out of the ETS and New Zealand now faces another chainsaw massacre in forestry job losses? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Well, Mr Speaker, I think New Zealanders will be loving it that they're run by a government which is putting the interests of households, jobs and in, in industries first. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, does the Minister think that Kiwis will be loving it, in the words of the Prime Minister, that his changes to the emissions trading scheme are going to cost taxpayers $328 million, according to the Treasury paper that went to Cabinet, $328 million that has been transferred from polluters onto taxpayers. The Honourable Tim Gross. Mr Speaker, this is treading over very well trodden ground. That represents a figure of revenue that would have occurred had we decided to increase charges to tax payers and households. 80% of that figure would have been borne by households and businesses. Dr Russell Norman. Does the Minister think that Kiwis will be loving it, in the words of the Prime Minister, that the small island state's chair, Nauru's Marlene Moses, has said that she is disappointed and mystified by New Zealand's refusal to sign up to a second commitment period under the Kyoto Protocol? The Honourable Tim Grosley. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I think we'll be able to clarify our situation when we have the opportunity to speak directly to the Nauruan delegation. Commentary. Dr Russell Norman. Will the Minister agree to sign this letter to the future generations of New Zealanders saying, I am sorry, I knew what the right thing was to do, but I chose not to do it, Tim Grosser? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Uh, Mr Speaker, I don't think I can possibly answer the question. I have no idea what this letter is or what the organisation he's referring to, unless it's the delegation of New Zealand youth leaders to the conference in Qatar, which is going to include, as a so-called youth leader, a political adviser of the Green Party. 
documentary. Dr. Russell Norman. Did you pick him? Order, I've called Dr. Russell. Order. Order, I must hear the question. Dr. Russell Norman. How can we ask the rest of the world to make the necessary cuts to avoid out of control climate change when we ourselves are refusing to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and we have the second largest increase according to the United Nations? The Honourable Tim Mr. Speaker, the whole purpose of this conference that uh, Mr Bridges and I will be going to is to try and ensure that the future agreement encompasses 85% of countries outside the Kyoto Protocol so that we have a serious opportunity for the first time of getting on top of the problem. And I think that's an entirely reasonable position for any New Zealand government to take. Point of, order. Point of order, Dr. Russell Norman. I seek leave to table a draft letter from the Honourable Tim Grosser apologising to future. Order, order the source of this document. I wrote it for him. Uh, we don't. Uh, <laughs> question number four, Jacinda Ardern. Point of order, Dr. Russell Norman. Mr. Speaker, I seek, to leave, I seek leave to table the United Nations latest update on greenhouse gas emissions. That's available to all members, the latest uh, document. Uh, Todd McClay, supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, supplementary question to the Minister. Has the Minister come across any other recent reports on New Zealand's current international standing in respect of our relative environmental impact? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Uh, yes, I have seen uh, another report, the so-called plus one report that attracted media comment this week, called Evaluating the Relative Environmental Impact of Countries, which notes, I have to say, that we are, not, we are well off the pace set by the top best ten performers, which include Tajikistan, Djibouti, the Central African Republic and Swaziland. But I'm sure, Mr Speaker that we could achieve parity with these leading performers if we adopted the economic policies pursued by the Green Party. Question number four, Jacinda Ardern. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Social Development. Does she stand by her statement, quote, no one wants to see young people 